In this second video, we will develop Peter Kralich's portfolio analysis model. A brief reminder of the basic model. Kralich suggested different strategies are needed for different categories, dependent upon two key dimensions, business impact and supply market complexity. Even today, you will hear advocates of supply-based consolidation or leverage advocate the universal application of these tactics across the entire spend portfolio. It reminds me of the old adage, if the only tool that you have is a hammer, then every problem becomes a nail. Such outdated thinking shows that even though Kralich's ideas are nearly 30 years old, they have as much relevance today as when they were first published in 1983. Kralich suggested that each quadrant in the portfolio warranted different strategies, and the same tactic was not appropriate in each quadrant. Kralich also proposed that understanding the balance of power between the buyer and the supplier was important to determine whether the buyer's strategy was to maintain the current situation or to change the status quo. The balance of power is the net dependence of one party on the other. Kralich suggested a number of criteria were needed to understand which party enjoyed the balance of power. The buyer will be strong when... Supplier will be strong when In this video we will explore strategies for the non-critical and bottleneck quadrants and we will link the recommended strategies to the balance of power between the parties. So let's start with the non-critical quadrant. I used to have a team member called Phil and Phil bought print. Phil would get three quotes for each job and negotiate hard to get the best terms possible. The problem with Phil's approach was that while print can be a buyer's market with low switching costs and multiple suppliers, Phil spent a lot of time focusing on one variable, price. As there are likely to be hundreds, if not thousands, of non-critical transactions, the real opportunity was in managing the volume of print jobs efficiently rather than trying to get the best deal on every single job. So for non-critical categories, the recommended approach is simplification, reducing the indirect transactional costs. I dealt with one organisation that raised more than 50,000 orders a year where the order value was less than $100. Can you imagine that? Most people calculate the cost of raising and paying a purchase order at around $100, depending on how the transaction is managed. So if Phil got a 10% discount of a $100 order, he would save $10. But if the transaction was managed more efficiently, we might be able to cut the transaction costs in half. This is why procurement cards and online e-procurement systems are so popular. This strategy works well whoever has the balance of power, but might be the only option if the supplier enjoys the balance of power. So strategy number one for print is simplify and improve efficiency. Strategy number two is to change the positioning of the category by moving it to another quadrant, leverage. This could be done by aggregating the print orders. Instead of Phil awarding every single job to a different printer after getting three quotes, he could have issued an RFP for a shopping basket of print jobs and awarded a contract for all print jobs to the bidder who offered the best value solution overall. The award of a period agreement for print would have freed up Phil's time to focus upon the other categories where he could make a greater impact on the spend portfolio. And of course, this strategy changes the balance of power in favour of the buyer, allowing the buyer to harvest more value from the market. Let's move on to talk about the bottleneck quadrant. 
The categories in this quadrant often represent a significant risk to the buying organisation, and it's common for the balance of power to favour the supplier. For example, we may buy spare parts for a key machine. How many sources do we have? One. What are the implications of non-performance? High. Who has the balance of power? The supplier. In this case, strategy three is to accept dependence upon the supplier and seek to mitigate the risk through negotiating a contract or holding stock of spare parts or perhaps developing a contingency plan. However, when we have weak bargaining power, we are unlikely to be able to transfer much risk to the supplier through a contract, so a longer-term strategy might be to broaden the specifications of the product or to search for new suppliers. Strategy four might be to change the positioning of the category by moving it to another quadrant, in this case, non-critical. We would have to explore the use of generic spare parts or find other sources of supply in order to reduce our risk. In reality, the opposite is more often the case. What should be a non-critical category ends up being a bottleneck category because of specifications that create a de facto monopoly. OK, that's it for non-critical and bottleneck categories. Let's explore leverage and strategic categories in the final video and make sure that we acknowledge our debt to Peter Kralich, a man who encouraged us to think about what we are doing and why.